This is Keith Ward with Visual Studio Magazine, and joining me right now is one of our Visual Studio Live speakers, Miguel Castro. Miguel, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, you're, one of the topics you're speaking on at Visual Studio Live is dependency injection. Yep. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what that is and why developers need to know about it? Well, it's something that should be mainstream. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I still talk about it. And I say still because to a lot of developers, the speakers in particular here, uh, people are at, a, at a, a little bit more of a higher level, um, it, it is a mainstream topic and it's something that they use every day without even thinking about it. But I'm constantly finding that not enough people are using dependency injection or not writing code in a certain way, the way we need to write code today, uh, which is why I still talk about this. Um, and I think one of the reasons is because dependency injection completely violates a coding principle that we have been taught to use since the beginning of time. We do not, in, when we use dependency injection, one of the number one rules is no longer doing new objects up from inside another one. Mm -hmm. No equals new this. That stops completely. It stops 100%. And that's a very, very hard habit to break because it's something that for most of us, and I say us because myself included at one point, this was common sense. You know, you're using a class and you have a method in there and you need to new something up to use another class and you just do it, as simple as that. And that was a no-brainer for us and we didn't think anything of it um, until all of a sudden unit testing hit the world by a storm. <laughs> And now we no longer do that. We use dependency injection, which means that whatever dependencies a class uh, relies on, whatever other classes a class relies on, are injected into it in a different way, usually through an abstraction. And the number one reason for this is so we can test properly. Um, I can give you a, an actual example, sure. which is one of the ones that I use in my talk. Um, think about database hits. If you have a business class or a business object of some kind and you're calling out to a data layer object, now the job of that data layer object, let's say it's Entity Framework, for example, is going to be to open a database and perform some kind of database work. Now think about when you need to test the class at hand here. You need to be able to, to freely execute a unit test on that anytime you want and as many times as you want. Now, if the job of that class is to hit the database, that means that you need to accept the fact that you are going to freely and at any time hit the database and perform right. updates as many times as you want. And that's just not acceptable. So if you're not using dependency injection right now, what is that doing to you as a developer? How, how much more inefficient do you think a developer is who's not using that? Um, what, what you're doing is that you're writing untestable code, which has become almost... Um, I don't know, sacrilegious in today's uh, world where apparently a lot of coding has become religious topic conversations, you know what I mean? Um, I don't, whether it should or should not be, obviously it's a different conversation, mm -hmm. but that's what you're doing. You're writing untestable code. You're writing code that, that cannot be tested properly. And tested, testing is not just about throwing, writing a unit test and executing a method uh, and then running it to see if it works. Right. It's about running it under different scenarios. And if you're locked into one scenario all the time, which means every time I run this unit test, I'm going to update a customer record, mm -hmm. that's just unacceptable. I may be, I, I, I need to be able to test different units in a class, and some of those may mean not hitting the database, but instead mocking up or simulating the idea of hitting the database. And that's why we use dependency injection. And the most important thing to understand is that the, the concept of a dependency injection is slightly separate from the use of what people relate to dependency injection every day, which is the dependency injection container. Yeah. That's a product. Right. The product is not what helps us test. Is writing code so that we are injecting dependencies instead of hard coding dependencies. That's what helps us test. Now the second part to that is, and I do this in first part and second part in my talk as well, where I introduce the concepts and I, I introduce the concepts of writing decoupled software, mm -hmm. testable software, and then once you have eliminated newing up objects inside other objects, you now have to solve the second problem. Okay, where do I new them up? Obviously, they have to come from somewhere, and they have to get into my class somewhere. And that's where the product, a dependency injection container. And when I say product, it sounds like I'm trying to sell something. These are all free. Right, right. right so right. these are all free, and Microsoft has two themselves. They have MEF and they have Unity. Um, and then the open source community has a bunch of themselves. But this is where the product comes into play. The product is what helps you at runtime and production time um, inject dependencies into right. classes. Right. And it does it in a recursive manner. Right. 
So when you ask for a class, not only do you get a class with its dependencies, but if those dependencies have any of their own, and they told two friends and so on and so on, right. you get a nicely resolved class at the end. Yet in a unit test, you may not use a container. A unit test, you rely on mocking up your own dependencies mm -hmm. that do not do the live stuff, but simulate other kind of actions so that you can test properly. Okay. So is it is learning dependency injection, is this a hard thing? For no, most no, 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 it's not. Really no, simple, it, it's not. Really it, 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 I'm not going to say it's really simple. There's, a, there's certain concepts you got to grasp. And the number one concept is the one that I described at the beginning of, mm -hmm. of our talk, which is breaking the habit. Get, you know, s right. Don't think the same way as you used to. It's, it's a very hard habit to break. When you tell somebody, don't ever new up a class inside another class, the, most people look at you funny. What are you talking about? How am I, how am I going to do it then? But when I answer that question, if I answer, if I do my job properly, most people understand it. It really isn't rocket science. The problem is it's one of these things that for a very long time it was, uh, it was part of the cool kids club. Right. And it was more intimidating than it was complex. I say that a lot about a technology, a lot of technologies. You know, these technologies are more intimidating than they are complex. But if they're taught right and they're explained right, they become mainstream. And that's right. what I'm trying to do. And that's why I'm speaking about a topic that to a lot of people that may be watching this interview, are prob they're probably saying, why is he talking? We've been doing this for years. Well, yeah, you've been doing it for years. But let me tell you something. I get a crowd of 300 people in a, in a pre-con here. And I ask them to raise their hands who's using dependency injection, who knows what it is, and I'll get about two dozen people wow. at most. You know, that's not a lot. So yeah. it needs to become more mainstream. It needs to become something that we code effortlessly. And right. that's what my goal is when I do talks like this. And it, it seems like part of that is, is making sure you're doing unit testing. And that's not something that all developers are comfortable with right now, is it either? Unfortunately, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, because a lot of developers tend to relate unit testing to test-driven development which sparks up one of those religious right. arguments I told right. you about. Right. Um, Self-admittedly, I'm not a TDD guy. Now, a thousand people watching this right now probably just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that yeah. doesn't mean that I don't write unit tests. That right. just means that I don't follow a certain methodology right. of test-first development. Um, to me, that's not bad. Now I got another thousand going, thank God he said that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, but, I, but I religiously write unit tests. That's just, you have to do that today. I mean, we can't write maintainable code. And remember, I'm a consultant. I make a job out of going and doing something and then walking out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times coming back, a lot of times not coming back. So I got to leave something that is testable and maintainable for the team that's coming in after me. A lot of time that team may be, may be lacking skills in certain areas. Right. So yeah, I mean, testing is, is but completely an incredibly important right. topic. Uh, but just because you're not doing TDD does not mean that you can't do testing, that we right. gotta decouple those two things. So the takeaway really here is don't be afraid of dependency injection. Absolutely, absolutely. Don't, um, don't be afraid that there's, there's some great material on the web. Uh, I talk about it significantly. I've been doing this talk for about, I guess this is my third year doing this now, mm -hmm. and it still fills the room, which tells you what? That there's a lot of people that don't, don't know what it is or have been intimidated by it and finally want to understand this topic. You know, because somebody that knows how to use DI, they're not going to come into my talk. I'm very clear about this is an intro. I get you from zero to 60 with dependency injection. But I guarantee you by the time you leave, you're going to be at 60 because it's really not that complicated. Excellent. Miguel Castro, thanks very much for joining us. It's a pleasure.